Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the news program on 22 Hours channel, where we provide the most up-to-date news on politics and society, both domestically and globally. Now let's dive into the last day news highlights. Ladies and gentlemen, according to the paper, the people of Zhuzhou, Hebei, China could not believe that they had to experience such a large and dramatic flood. At the confluence of many rivers, Xuezhu was one of the hardest hit cities in Hebei, China during this flood. Xiaoban Kin's family has a furniture business warehouse in Siguan Wood Market, Xuezhu City. On Monday, she and her husband went to the warehouse to work as usual. At 1300 hours p.m., a member of the community group sent a notice with the content, There is a flood and need to evacuate immediately. This information does not seem to attract attention. Chauvin thought the water would only rise a little and they, like most people in the wood market, did not evacuate. However, by 8 p.m. on Monday night, she discovered the water in the warehouse had risen to her ankles. Out the door, the water was up to the thigh. Go further, the water level is even deeper. No one realized that the flood would be so ferocious. When the announcement was made, everyone was indifferent because no one had ever experienced it, so a lot of people were trapped. Xiaovan told the paper that flood waters carried wood and household items such as air conditioners, washing machines and refrigerators floating on the water. At night, the water continued to rise and flow rapidly. Xiaovan and his wife risked each person holding a phone box and floating on the water. To avoid being swept away by the current, they managed to hold on to the door of the warehouse and float on the water for more than five hours. At that time, I thought about writing a will and telling my relatives my bank account number and password. At about 6 a.m. The next morning, when the warehouse flooded to the top, Chauvin and his wife hugged the phone box skillfully drifting with the water and climbed to the second floor of a house more than 10 meters away. When we drifted, the water level was only about 10 centimeters from the second floor balcony. She estimates, the water depth at the time was about 5 meters. Luckily, she and her husband were also brought to a safe place by the rescue team. According to her, rescuing the wood market is not easy because the water is fast flowing, there are many wooden objects floating, the road is blocked, the rescue boat will be punctured. According to China's Southern Character Weekly, since 1963, Xuezhu has never seen such a severe flood, leaving people unaware of the seriousness behind other early warning messages. Together. From 8 a.m. on Sunday to 11 a.m. on Tuesday, Track Xiaogin experienced heavy rainfall, with an average rainfall of up to 355.1. China's central television CCTV said that, according to the latest statistics, as of 10 a.m. on Tuesday, a total of 133,913 people from 146 villages in Chuishu have been affected by floods. By 5 o'clock. On the same day, 2.25. 38 kilometers squared of agricultural land was submerged in the sea. In recent days, rescue forces from all over China have gathered in this city, carrying professional rescue supplies and equipment. CCTV quoted Juju officials as saying that the city needed a large number of boats to evacuate residents due to local water and electricity shortages. Before that, right from Sunday, Juju issued an emergency response first and all departments of the city were required to immediately implement emergency response measures to natural disasters caused by rain, storms, while doing our best to prevent and respond to major disasters. Yuizhu also organized 28 emergency rescue teams consisting of a total of 8,755 members to cooperate with professional rescue teams. According to the Hebei Provincial Office of Flood Prevention and Drought Relief, Due to the general effect of Typhoon Doksuri and warm cold air currents, heavy rain lasted for nearly 144 hours in Hebei from 8 a.m. On Thursday to 8 a.m. on Wednesday this week, with the average rainfall across the province is 146.2. Total rainfall is 27.5 billion cubic meters, double the total reservoir capacity of all large and medium-sized reservoirs across the province. Hebei province has now displaced more than 1.2 million people from flooded areas. The flood waters have begun to recede after the torrential rains have stopped. In addition, water levels in flood retaining reservoirs are expected to gradually decrease within a month. Due to the influence of Typhoon Doksuri, heavy rain poured down again in northeast China, 
causing water in many rivers in Heilongjiang province to exceed warning levels. In which, there are rivers and localities that are experiencing the highest amount of flood water in the past 20 to 30, even 50 years. According to the latest information, at 12 noon local time, the Heilongjiang Provincial Flood and Drought Prevention Command decided to raise the flood control emergency response level from level 3 to level 2, equivalent to level 2, with Beijing and Hebei before that. The decision comes after the province has been hit with heavy rainfalls since Wednesday and was forced to issue multiple meteorological risk warnings on Thursday, such as a strong convection warning, a heavy rain, warning of risks of geological disasters and flash floods. In a notice issued on Thursday morning, after raising the flood emergency response level from level 4 to level 3, the city of Mudanjiang in Heilongjiang province said that due to the severe flood situation on the river, Heilanghir, hydrological and irrigation agencies analyzed predict that this river will experience a flood once every 30 years, while the city of Mudanjiang will suffer a flood. We only met once in 20 years. Heavy rainfall causes water levels in many rivers to rise. According to the monitoring and forecasting of the local hydrological agency, as of ATAM today, there were 31 reservoirs in the area operating above the allowable flood level from 0.1 minus 4.81 meter. The water level of 19 rivers has exceeded the warning threshold from 0.2 minus 2.47 meter, of which seven rivers exceeded the safe water level from 0.37 minus 1.24 meter. It is expected that some rivers such as Keen and Laplam rivers will experience floods only once every 50 years. In a notice just sent to the capital of Harbin and the city of Mudanjiang today, the Heilongjiang Provincial Committee for Flood and Drought Prevention and Control has asked these localities to improve their political bravery, focus maintain high level of vigilance, uphold a sense of responsibility, well aware of the seriousness and urgency of the flood and disaster situation as well as the importance of doing well in flood prevention and rescue work. Disaster Assistance Today The latest forecast from the Harbin Meteorological Station shows that the heavy rain this time is extreme. The rainfall in the south of the city of Wuching and Shangji districts in the area has been close to or exceeding the high level. Most in history, it is known that Heilongjiang province is home to the largest and oldest oil field in China, and is also a major food-producing province of the country. Wuching City is one of the top five rice-growing districts in China. Currently, the rice fields here have been heavily flooded and are in danger of losing everything. Hebei Province in northern China, which borders Beijing, has had to relocate more than 1.2 million people from flooded areas, including nearly 860,000 in floodplains, to help the capital escape flooding. The province is expected to need about a month for flood waters to recede. With the flood situation still serious in Beijing, Tianjin and Hebei, China decided to use state flood retention zones, along with all 155 large and medium-sized reservoirs in the High River Basin to contain floods. In particular, Hebei province alone has activated 7 13 flood drainage zones to receive about 1.8 billion M3 of water, reducing flood pressure for Beijing capital and Tianjin city. As of Thursday morning, according to data from the Hebei Flood and Drought Prevention Command, the province has displaced about 1.23 million people, of which the inhabitants of the floodplain amounted to 857,200. Hebei has also mobilized more than 4,700 rescue teams with more than 100,000 people and sent more than 2,200 working groups to the affected areas. Due to the influence of Typhoon Dog Suri, heavy rain lasted for nearly 144 hours in Hebei from 8 a.m. last Wednesday to 8 a.m. On Wednesday, with the average rainfall across the province being more than 146 mm. The province has suffered a total rainfall of 27.5 billion M3, double the total capacity of all large and medium reservoirs in the province. The city of Shuju in Hebei, through which many rivers flow and some areas are used as floodplains, has been hit hard. In a program of China Central Television CCTV, Ms. Li Na, Deputy Director of the Hebei Water Resources Department, said the average rainfall in Juju was up to 398 mm on Wednesday evening. About 300 million to 400 million cubic meters of flood water is expected to flow through Juju, making the city the heaviest flood zone after days of heavy rain. Since the rain has stopped, the water levels in the rivers are continuously decreasing, 
But this decline takes some time. Of the flood containment and containment areas that we have activated, some villages are flooded, but due to the relatively high foundation the water can recede quickly, the impact will be less. However, some areas of arable and need more time. The total time needed was about a month, Miss Lina said. China has denied reports that the flooding in Shuizhou was caused by flood discharges as part of efforts to protect Beijing, stressing that the activation of floodplains is an overall consideration. Meanwhile, Hebei Provincial Party Committee Secretary Ni Yufeng said the locality needs to activate the flood holding zone to reduce flood pressure and act as a protective river for the capital. The Tianjin government near Beijing also activated a part of the flood relief zone in Jinghai district. More than 30,000 residents of 23 villages in the county were asked to relocate as of noon Thursday. After Typhoon Dok Suri made landfall last weekend, the Chinese capital recorded its heaviest rainfall in 140 years. Flooding has killed 11 people in Beijing and 9 people in Hebei. Meanwhile, China's central meteorological station reported that rainfall had shifted to the northeast of the country from Wednesday. The remnants of Typhoon Dok Suri are expected to bring heavy rain to the Jilin and Heilongjiang provinces here between Wednesday and Friday. Flood control authorities in the Heilongjiang cities of Harbin and Mudanjiang implemented emergency flood control measures on Wednesday and Thursday, such as closing schools and facilities, training, pausing construction activities and outdoor activities. Currently, many areas in Heilongjiang are deeply submerged in water with the risk of losing crops. China is worried about a geological disaster caused by prolonged heavy rains. The mountainous area on the outskirts of Beijing, China still faces a high risk of geological disasters after a series of thunderstorm warnings for two days yesterday and today in the Chinese capital area. The Beijing Hydrological Station has issued a yellow warning, the third level on a four-level warning scale in China, about the risk of heavy rain, strong winds and lightning, and forecast thunderstorms to continue covered many capital areas in two days yesterday and today. The agency also issued warnings about the risk of geological disasters, such as landslides, in most of Beijing's mountainous areas. Notably, suburban districts such as Fangshan, Mondagu and Matvan are at high risk of flash floods. On Wednesday, the Beijing Hydrographic Station recorded the highest amount of rain not seen in 140 years due to the impact of Typhoon Dok Suri. Heavy rains caused flooding in Beijing, killing 11 people. Our newsletter for today is here to end, please leave any feedback below in the comments. If you find it interesting, give us a like, comment, share and press the bell to subscribe to the channel. Thank you for listening and see you soon. That's conclude the last big news bulletin from 22 hours channel. Thank you all for your attention and viewership. Please subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon to receive the past date and most accurate update from 22 hour channel. Goodbye and see you in the next video.